And that's recording. Hi guys, welcome to another episode. In this episode, we're going to be shooting, hopefully, uh, the Flying Scotsman coming across the Ruble Head Viaduct. I'm going to keep it nice and short, nice and sweet today. I think we might be up against the elements, but uh, let's give that a go. In the distance there, I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see it. That's the famous Ruble Head Viaduct. It's absolutely fantastic. And we're expecting the Flying Scotsman to bob past there in about an hour and a half's time from now. So, first of all, the most important thing is, which direction is it coming in? Well, we know for a fact it's gonna be going this way. So, as you can see it now from left to right hand side. And it does make a difference because, in theory, you've got smoke coming from the chimney stacks. So, it's really important to make sure that you get that classic looking shot. It's better off obviously shooting it from the front as opposed to shooting it from behind. So, a couple of things now then. If it was coming this way, of course I could stand here exactly where I am now. Maybe look for something a bit more interesting in the foreground. Obviously I'd get a little bit closer to frame that in a bit better like that. But the go-to classic shot that pretty much everybody takes, and don't dispel this, don't switch off and think, you know, everybody else does it so I'm not going to do it, is everybody pretty much stands up there when the train comes from left to right. It's a slightly elevated area. You look down pretty much level with the track then you see obviously the viaduct in there the train now the wind is blowing quite strong left to right as you look as well left to right so of course the only problem is with that is when you're then stood on this side factoring in the wind and the billowing smoke the smoke will probably cover the back half of the carriages so that's the only thing you've got to consider I might shoot from here, I've no problem with that. It's actually making a return journey later on today, so if this weather's a bit bad, we might end up coming back. The return journey, without stating the obvious, is as you can see it now from right to left, in which case, I might go from here. Interestingly so, uh, I've actually photographed this before, and we photographed it from the other side, and really low down, and we've actually used a puddle to give us a nice reflection in there, and that's quite interesting. In actual fact, while we're uh, kind of wandering around now, we'll put that up on the screen, let you guys have a look at that, and then you can make your own mind up whether you like that or not. My main concern now then, not so much the wind and the rain, although that's a pain, again, what's the chances? It's the light. The light's nice at the moment, the sky's really quite nice, but darken that down a bit. Oh, this damn rain. Here's me saying, here's me saying not to worry about the rain. All I'm concerned about now, pretty much, is the light. Let's give that a clean, because we're going to the right hand side of the bridge, shooting across the left hand side of the bridge, but I know for a fact that the sun, if it does break out, will break out over here somewhere. And of course that's horrendous for us because that means we'll be shooting directly into the sun. We'll lose the drama in the sky and it could ruin the shot. But hey ho, that's a decision you've got to make now and it's a gamble. I mean, this is classic photography. If you look at uh, that time lapse, or the time lapse is running right now, then you'll actually see how hit and miss it is for photographers on a day like this to actually nail that shot. But you've literally got about 25, maybe 30 seconds. That's the duration uh, it'll take for that train to obviously come across that bridge. Worse than that, there's only a particular place I want it, so it's quite literally a five, maybe six second window. That's all I've got to play with. Okay guys, I've pretty much settled for this particular point. It's slightly elevated. We're looking pretty much at a 40, 45 degree angle down at the Ribblehead viaduct with the train coming onto us. My slight worry at this present moment in time is that light's pretty much breaking through and that could be a real, 
uh, border contention. I'll spin my camera around in a second, I'll talk you through my setup, but before I do that, while the camera's pointing at me, we've got uh, quite strong ND grads on there. If you look down here, I've got a 0.3 and a 0.9 ND grad on there. Potentially, this light could kill this picture, so I'm making every attempt I possibly can to bring that light down in the sky. Also, the clouds at the moment, although there's an hour to go, are really quite dramatic. So fingers crossed if it stays like that, it could be pretty cool. But there you go, there's the sun coming out now. So it's a bit of a worry. My camera setup, I've opted for F8 at the moment. I prefer to go to F16. That's pretty much my go-to aperture setting when we do landscapes, but I've opted for F8 simply because I want to try and encourage a bit more of a shutter speed. My ISO at this present moment is at 200 and my shutter speed is only around about a hundredth of a second. I really want more than that. There's no point coming to a, a venue like this to capture such an iconic train with all the smoke billowing out for it to be blurred. But uh, I'll make that decision in about an hour's time from now, literally seconds before uh, the train turns up. I don't mind raising my ISO. It makes no difference if I'm perfectly honest. Okay, let's spin this camera around and talk you through my composition so this is where i am my camera set at 50 mil so if i zoom in i'm roughly looking at that there now i'm pretty much putting that let's just increase that light there i'm putting that horizon it's, it's kind of middle-ish but i'm putting the bridge which is the most important part pretty much low down on the lower third and the reason for that is because I want the drama in the sky. I focused about two thirds of the way into that frame, actually maybe slightly more than that. That's why F8 doesn't really matter because F8 at that distance away will give me a great depth of field. So pretty much I focus there and then I put my focus then onto manual so my camera doesn't have to try and chase the focus when I press the button. And then quite literally I'm going to follow the train coming up here. I'll probably start shooting it when it's about here and then grab it when it's about there because I think compositionally wise that will look fantastic just there. But I want to try and create or try and get more sky in that picture, which I actually will do on my camera, it's full frame, so I won't have any issues there whatsoever. A good tip for you, by the way, is when I've taken this shot, as you can see, there's lots of people all down here, and there's more and more people turning up, and we've still got an hour to go, so this is going to be pretty packed. Take a few shots now because you might be able to use one of these later, and more importantly, keep your camera tri uh, on a tripod and keep it really really sturdy don't move it and the reason why we do that is because once we've taken the picture let's just hang around for 20 minutes or half an hour then everybody will disappear when everybody's disappeared retake that picture and that'll just save us an awful lot of work in photoshop and not only that but there's no point rushing because the car parks are absolutely packed um, so just hang around 20 minutes maybe 30 minutes and by that time probably 75 or 80 percent of people will be uh, pretty much gone we can re-snap that picture and then just join them together just using obviously the floor that's all we need to worry about the sky and everything will be perfectly fine so that's it just a waiting game now and then it's basically fingers crossed for the light fingers crossed for the weather it's a bit it's a bit like that according to the weather forecast but uh, let's see what happens That's so this is it, a big moment. Like I said, with that wind blowing across there, that's the only slight issue we're gonna have now, of course, is you're gonna miss out on half the carriages. So we want it a roughly around about there. So let's snap off a few shots. And now, like I say, the secret now is to actually keep the camera still, don't move the camera and just hang around for 20 minutes. Wait till everybody's disappeared. Quite literally, that's all it'll be is 20 minutes. Wait till everybody's disappeared. And then we can just simply clone the bottom in. And there she goes. 